Hello, um, I am Emma Fisher. I teach middle school band and orchestra and general music at Hidden River Middle School in St. Paul. Last year I taught half a year at um, Hazel Park and did elementary music and that was like straight out of student teaching. So I graduated from Gustavus Davis in 2021. This is my first full year as a teacher. I'm loving it. Um, and like the students are amazing, life is good. Anyhow, we're talking about creating an inclusive environment beyond just building relationships with students, right? Because that's great, but it's not everything. Uh, so I'm gonna break it down into five parts based on you know what I've learned through my experiences and things that have been really successful for me as a new teacher, especially. Um, first one being cultural responsivity. Second one, student voice. Third, UDL, backwards design, like how you lesson plan, right? Fourth one being taking your literacy classes seriously in college. And the fifth one being professional collaboration. So we'll go through these one by one, hopefully boom, boom, boom. I've already recorded this video and it was like nine minutes long. And so I'm gonna try not to do that again. Uh, okay, first thing, cultural responsivity. Huge, 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 huge. I could talk about this for ages, and I'm sure you've already learned a lot about on it, a lot about on it, a lot about it on your own. So I'm just gonna skip like the main part, assume you have that background knowledge, and highlight one thing, it, which is the intersection of culture and race um, and disability. That's something that I think gets overlooked a lot of the times and misunderstood and students of color are both disproportionately referred to special education services when they don't need them and don't benefit from those supports and um, face a disproportionate amount of disciplinary actions that are harmful in the long term and actually don't support the student right um, so being able to learn about the intersection of those two things is like absolutely critical you need to do it you need to do it because it will change you as a person and change you as a teacher. Um, second thing, student voice. Being able to give a students a chance to express their identity themselves. We spent the first two weeks literally talking about identity and who we are, um, getting to know each other. So I'm gonna show you two activities I did at the beginning of the year that were focused around identity and giving students an opportunity to let me know who they are so they felt included and respected and so that I understood them. First one is this. You can pause if you want. Um, but I asked students their last name so that I could find them in the roster. And then I asked them the name they want me to call them in class so that if they you know, had a dead name on the roster, they didn't have to dead name themselves. Then there's some information about like name, pronouns, settings where I should and should not use those names and pronouns. Um, so that students with various gender identities feel like they belong and are respected in class. Then, and I also have like a bunch of like, why it's important to use pronoun posters kind of stuff in the room. So students know that their identities belong in my classroom. Um, also did this quick identity inventory, which is, where students had an opportunity to tell me about them. Some of the most impactful questions on here were, um, everybody thinks that I'm blank, but the truth is. And then I wish my teacher, or I want my teacher to remember that. Um, and I got some answers in there that really informed how I teach, especially a lot of people and a lot of my students of color especially said, everybody thinks that I'm mean or that I'm lazy, but the truth is that like, you know, and then they would say something else. Um, I also had a lot of students remember, write under, I want my teacher to remember that a lot of them wrote, I have ADHD or I have a disability or I can't see in some way. So it was a chance for me to really remember, you know, what those students need and for them to communicate like, hey, I need this to be successful in your classroom. And I was able to make sure I implement those things and I was able to be really proactive about getting those things for those kids because in the real world, you will not have IEPs until like the second or third week of school. like where it's October, I have still not gotten some kids IEPs. That's reality. It's just how it is. Um, it's wrong, but it's how it is. Um, anyways, so being able to do that at the beginning of the year, huge, it's huge, it really helped me. Um, okay, third thing, UDL, backwards design. Oh, this video is getting long again, I'm sorry. Um, but backwards design UDL has to do with, okay, A, saving yourself some time, B, making sure your students are successful. Um, you need to start with what your students need when you're planning lessons. You can't like plan a lesson of like, this is what I wanna teach and then be like, okay, now I have to figure out how to make sure that students can access it. No, start with student needs, start with the students, um, start with what you want them to learn, be able to do, start with their identities, 
And then from there, build into your lesson multiple ways to access that content, work with it, express it, um, multiple ways to explain it. That's the whole thing of UDL. If you haven't learned about that yet, I don't know if you have, um, look into it because like huge. It's how I live my life every single day. Um, fourth thing, literacy classes in college especially music and majors tend to be like I don't need this class why do I have to take this it doesn't matter it's not related to it yes it is it's one of the most important classes you will take when you're a teacher literacy is at the forefront of everything you're doing um in ways that I didn't understand until I started teaching I mean I'm teaching middle school and I have a lot of students who haven't learned how to write their name yet I have a lot of students who are like learning the letters of the alphabet not a lot a few who are learning the letters of the alphabet but like a lot of students who don't know how to read um and i lose a lot of kids when i ask students to read or to write um especially at the beginning because i didn't understand the ways in which i needed to differentiate text and differentiate activities where reading is required um, so taking those literacy classes seriously, understanding how literacy develops so that you can make text accessible so that you can sit one on one with students and help them in a way that feels empowering and doesn't feel like, oh, I can't read so that you can avoid that shutdown is super important. Like I can't express how important understanding literacy and knowing how to teach literacy skills is one of the most important things you can do. Um, last thing, professional collaboration professional collaboration um that's made a huge difference for me as a teacher because there's lots of people in the world who know a lot more than I do and there's lots of people who know a lot more than you do um and it's great and amazing and I love learning so for example at the beginning of the year I had our district representative for blind and visually impaired students come into my classroom observe my teaching look around the room and make a list of suggestions of you should change this implement this I noticed like on your sheet you like increase the contrast here that kind of stuff that was inst able helped me instantly make my classroom more accessible um and more inclusive of all students and it, like it just helps everybody right so um, being able to have that kind of professional collaboration that professional support really really makes a difference and I didn't know that that was a thing that I could even have happen until I started teaching so find those people who are experts in inclusion ask them to come to your classroom and help you out it's amazing um there's also people in your building like the special ed staff um the intervention spats staff intervention staff that are there to help you that are there to you know they're they're really good at what they do basically is what i'm trying to say um use them as resources they want to help you they want their students to succeed just like you do um working with those people can help you learn things that you didn't know give you new insight um and help you grow as an educator and really make sure that your classroom is meeting the needs of the students whose needs are often neglected yeah um I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to because I have to teach a class right now and you don't want to sit through a nine minute video, even though it's at eight minutes. Okay. Anyhow, hope you're all doing well. Um, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Take care.